Hey, Waldorf, yeah? what are we going to see in here anyway? It's one of those 3D movies. Put on your glasses, Statler. Yeah. yeah. Hey, 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 look. Look at the guy in the goofy mask. That's not a mask. Oh, sorry, lady. Good company. Hey. Wow. Hey. All right. Do, people. All right. Hey, don't mind us. We'll be finished in just a minute. Hey. Hey. Star Tours announces the arrival of the Endor Express. Once we've had a chance to service the Star Speeder, we'll begin our boarding procedures. All right. Now can we go to Neverland? Can we, Uncle Walter? Huh? Huh? Maybe, please? Huh? Relax. Close your eyes and come with me on an adventure in three-dimensional sound. W -W Radio. Your information station. Hello and welcome to the WW Radio Show. Your Walt Disney World Information Station. I am your host, Lou Mangello, and this is show number 414 for the week of July 26th, 2015. I am here to help you have the best possible Disney vacation experience and bring you a little bit of Disney magic wherever you are with this podcast, videos, blog, live broadcasts, special events, books, audio tours, and more, whether you're going for your first time or you love the history, the details, the interviews, the secrets and stories, there's something here for you. You can subscribe to the podcast and iTunes and find everything else at www.radio.com. So Disney's D23 Expo returns to the Anaheim Convention Center from August 14th through the 16th, and I will be back again this year, both as a guest and broadcasting the entire event live at d23expolive.com. And with so much to see and do with so many different parts of the Disney company coming together to celebrate the past, present, and future, it can get a bit overwhelming. So this week, we're going to share 10 ways to help you get the most out of the D23 Expo. I'll then have the answer to our last Walt Disney World trivia question of the week and pose a new challenge for your chance to win a Disney prize package. Then stay tuned to the end of the show for more information about upcoming events and meet of the month. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this week's episode of the WDW Radio Show. The Magic Kingdom of Disneyland. Your attention, please. Since 2009, the biannual D23 Expo has celebrated the past, the present, and the future of all things Disney with a gathering for and with their most loyal fans. It is a three-day giant adventure that includes all of the wonder of Disney, including sneak peeks as to what's to come from the parks and the films and TV and gaming and interactive, as well as celebrities and presentations and Disney legends the archives, and the list really does go on and on and on. And look, it doesn't matter if you are a fan of one or some or all, because you are sure to discover something special at the D23 Expo 2015. It is the ultimate Disney fan event. It's coming back to the Anaheim Convention Center in just a couple of weeks, August 14th through the 16th. And I have really been there since the very beginning. I'm a D23 day, day one charter member, been at the very first and all the expos, not just really as a guest and a fan, but with a booth on the show floor, sharing sort of our own unique experiences with Disney fans at the expo and even ones that couldn't get to the expo in person. And I think the, the blessing of the expo is also a little bit of a curse, and I do mean that as a obscure once upon a time reference as I am crushing very hard right now on the evil queen who's going to be at the expo by the way uh, but it is huge and it can be overwhelming especially if you have never been there before so this week we're going to a little help from my friends we want to make the expo as special and magical and memorable as it can be so we're going to share sort of 10 ways ish to get the most out of the D23 Expo 2015 and joining me this week are some folks and friends who have shared it with me and helped out before and will be back again, hopefully this year. Because in 2009, the WW Radio booth had a space on the show floor next to our 
good friends at Mouse Fan Travel. And in 2011 and 2013, we joined forces like Paul McCartney and Michael Jackson for an even bigger and better booth. And we are back again this year for what we think will be the best expo ever. So let me first introduce Becky Mankin from MEI and Mouse Fan Travel. Thank you, Lou. That was such a nice way to introduce me. And by the way, you know, expos are better with friends, right? <laughs> so you, are- you share, you share the experience, you share the booth, you share everything. It's, you know, you share food. No, nah, I was going to say, you share everything <laughs> except the food. You share. Uh, you're going to be that way this year again, aren't you? I will. I will definitely sample from your plate if you are sitting okay. within arm's reach. But although I have very small <laughs> arms, so if you're like one seat away, I probably can't reach. Uh, also... My gal Friday, good friend, the editor and overlord of the WW Radio blog and newsletter. She is, of course, Mrs. Christy (laughs) Visaki. Hi, Lou. How are you? And Tony Caggiano, who is really just my friend because he brings me Italian meats and cheeses when he visits me from New York. So, Tony, (laughs) welcome. The nondescript Tony Caggiano. Yes. Thank you for having me here. I'm glad I could be here to do nothing and just hang. I'm listen, just bring you keep bringing meats and cheeses and we'll be f- like thunder buddies for life. You got it. Bro. <laughs> thunder buddies for life. <laughs> you don't get that reference. That's fine. So, oh, I get it. I get it. I'm Googling. I need to Google that. I think. Oh, they don't know. Yeah, <laughs> they don't know. They don't know. Anyway, so, I, you know, I was thinking uh, as we were getting ready to record today back to the 2009 D23 Expo. And I know, Becky, you can totally relate to this because when they announced the Expo, and more importantly, when they announced the fact that they were going to allow us as fans, right, or or those people who had, you know, businesses or or, um, communities, wherever it may be, to be part of the Expo right there on the show floor in the Collectors Forum, we were excited and amazed and a little bit confused and, and nervous and a little terrified and yeah. right. Cause we had no idea what to expect. Right. And I think we had no idea what to expect, not only as exhibitors, but even as fans, I mean, nobody really knew what this D 23 expo was, what it was going to be, what was going to going to happen there. Uh, I remember, you know, not knowing how many people were going to come. And I was trying to figure out how many postcards and magazines do I send? And uh, let's not so talk difficult. about the, the pyramid of boxes at the end of the expo. Because <laughs> we, we sort of over, we, we, we sent a little bit too much. Um, but I remember too, you know, the thing that I remember most about expo was the Thursday we were setting up saying, oh, I'm just going to turn on my you know laptop and we're going to do this like live broadcasting thing just for like 10 minutes just to see how it goes. Long story longer, we end up broadcasting the entire expo all three days. It was crazy how we were able to connect people to the experience, how people came there on Saturday right. because of what they were watching on Friday. Yeah, I remember people showing up at the booth going, I saw this yesterday and I just had to be here after seeing what was on the floor. And and you're right. We had no idea what to expect. Didn't know what Disney was going to do. Didn't know really what the whole D23 uh, picture was going to be. And yeah, we may have sent a little too much of some things and maybe not <laughs> enough of others, but we did kind of d- discover what, um, what what it was going to be all about. And of course, where we are today after a few of the shows. So it's really exciting that it's still going and it's still still really strong. Yeah, I think we and Disney have a little bit of experience now <laughs> under our yeah. belt. You know, they definitely adjusted from 2009 to 2011. It, it got bigger. They were able to streamline a lot of things. We were obviously familiar with what was going to go on. Um, so now forgive me because they all start to roll into each other. So Christy and Tony, you guys were did you you were you watched 2009, you were there 2011? Yes. Yeah, I remember I distinctly see. watching in 2009 and thinking I can't believe I'm not there, but it was in September that year, I think. Um and, you know, a lot of us were back in school and that type of thing, but uh, I was so envious of all the fun you guys were having and I was so grateful you were broadcasting it through the box loop because I felt like I wasn't missing out um on the experience. Yeah, and uh, I was, it was the same thing. I actually was home sick from work, and I wound up watching all three days that weekend. And uh, <laughs> while we were watching, my wife, Charlene, she came in and sat, and we knew right then that if they did it again, we were going to be there. And 
I can't believe that it's already six years ago that that was. I remember it like it was yesterday. And this is this will be my third expo. So that's what's crazy. Like six <laughs> years ago. Like, wow. Yeah. that You know. Uh, yeah. I remember he, that look on your face with all those boxes <laughs> like it was yesterday. <laughs> you know, I think that was the first time you saw Lou sort of without a smile on his face. <laughs> it does exist. Yeah. yeah, yeah it, 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 we, we, we didn't know how many people were come. So I sort of we kind of approximated and, and did some bad math and uh, realized it was actually cheaper to throw away all the postcards and, and stuff than it was to uh, ship it back home. But we live and we learn, and it yep. got bigger and it got better. And the next year, we had a giant balloon sorcerer's hat, and we were still live broadcasting. We even went bigger last year with uh, the booth was sort of the same size. I think we sort of scaled things up with our giant Disney dream slash fantasy balloon cruise ship and had a lot more fun, I think, too, uh, not just walking around and sharing the experiences of what was going on on the floor, but really a lot of stuff going on at the booth. And even last year, I keep saying it last year, last expo, it did grow bigger, right? They, I think they said there was about 50,000 fans that came. And I remember, you know, the Parks and Resorts Pavilion was really sort of the hub of activity and what people were talking about. And there was the Optimist and Tomorrowland and I, the Gravity Falls people I was excited to, to see, like just being, oh, you know, the, and the interactive kind of stuff. And, you know, you know again, we, we learn a lot, but I still get questions from people all the time who say, hey, I'm thinking about going finally for the first year. It is in August, like Christy said, so it's a little bit more accommodating for people who maybe are in school or have kids or, or are teachers, whatever it may be. But like I said, it, it like a trip to Disney World, I really don't think you can or should just show up, right? Just show up and figure it out when you get there. I think that you really need to sort of prepare ahead of time if you want to have the best experience. And that's why I said let's do 10-ish ways to really kind of prepare for and get the most out. If you want to maximize your time because those three days, even though they seem very long, go very, very, very fast. So I'm going to sort of just dive right into it, and I'm sure you guys will all agree with me that the first thing you need to do is you need to plan, 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 and plan your schedule before you get there, right? And, oh, absolutely. Yeah, and understand, go in with expectations like a Disney trip. You are not going to be able to see and do it all. So decision time needs to come before you step foot on the Anaheim Convention Center grounds. That was actually the number one thing I wrote down is that it is just like going to Walt Disney World. You it's absolutely impossible to do it all. So you have to prioritize, which means doing your homework and decide truly what's the absolute most important thing you want to see. Um, and then start, you know, ranking number two, number three, and then figuring out your strategy from there. It's just impossible to see it all. Yeah, because in addition to Hall D23 and Stage D23 and Stage 28, there's also all the pavilions on the show floor and there's signings. I mean, as if you go to D23 expo.com and you absolutely should you can see a schedule but there's also pages and pages and pages of everything from the disney store to the emporium to the the you know contests and what's coming up from abc and the movies and from tv i mean it can be overwhelming because you physically cannot be in more than one place at a time yeah and i think that the larger stages get a lot of attention but it's almost it might almost be like number nine on the countdown in my mind, but you really have to take time and do your research. So you see some of the what you would you would say, like smaller offerings, because there's some incredible stuff going on, um, smaller displays that people might just go flying past. But there's a lot of really cool, smaller things. I think I love the big stuff and I love every year the every expo the the parks and rec, you know, parks and resorts presentation for me is one of the high points but then i loved last year just going around and seeing some of the little things they had it set up um you know i think it's just as important it's like taking the time to stop and look around when you're in the parks and see all the little the little things the story behind it but there's a lot of that going on that i think is important to look into 
Right. And when you look at the ca- the schedule that's on uh, the D23 Expo site, it really does look like, oh, well, this is an easy day because you just go from this one and then you can go to this one. And then over there, I'll go to Hall 28 and then I'll go to, to uh, Stage 23. And however, you need to really keep in mind, especially if you've never been here before, that each one of those has a line that you're going to have to wait in. Um, and then there's also things like, like Tony just said, going on on the floor all over the place. It's not going to be represented on the schedule. So pretty much my advice when it comes to the schedule, prioritize what you want to do each day. Figure you're going to pick one, maybe two off of that list. And then tr- know that you're not going to make it to everything if you want to you know, enjoy everything else that's on the floor, including the um, the presenters and the, uh, the the little booths and the things that are going on there. There's just so much. It's overload. It really is overload. It is. And I think, like you said, you have to sort of focus on what is important to you. Because, look, like, you know, other of Disney events, you're going to have people that are there because they want to go to the Disney store. They want to get that exclusive limited edition collectible D23 Expo or, you know, whatever merchandise first other people want to start lining up for the first presentations of the day other people want to go and start seeing the the different pavilions you really need to figure out like you said becky what is of highest priority for you and look if it's shopping then you know do that first because a lot of that stuff is going to go very very quickly right and i think that leads into the next point besides the schedule i'm what are we this number nine now are we going to (laughs) try to keep count i think we're in trouble if we try to keep count but i think one of the biggest tips for people who've been there or who haven't in the past is to really take advantage of the stage pass and store pass opportunities which essentially allows you to get a fast pass to uh, view things on stage 23 or 28. And then the store pass, and both these can be uh, uh, obtained in Hall A. The store pass, they start giving them out at 10 a.m. until they're gone. And those allow you to choose a 30-minute time slot to return to the stores. Because remember the last few years, <laughs> the stores have had two-hour-long lines waiting to get in to spend your money. So it, it really take advantage of those opportunities to get through the lines and pack your patience. I think that's one of the smartest things they did, especially the store pass, the stage pass they've had in the past, but having the store pass, the, the, and remind, remember, remember it, there are a limited number, so it's not right. going to be available all day, but you do get priority entry to the Disney dream store, the Disney store, which is separate and Mickey's of Glendale, the Imagineering store. And you do kind of get these 30 minute, shopping windows right so if you go i I think to hall i want to say to hall a a uh, Mm -hmm. that's where you can go and sort of get your store fast pass fast pass return time uh because you're right i think there was a lot of, of frustration for people saying they were spending so much time online for things like that that they ended up missing the presentations because they got online too late Right. And I think that especially for the store pass, I think those are going to go very quickly. Um, They're going to start handing them out at 10 and they're only going to give them out till that certain number is gone, much like a a fast pass to Radiator Springs Racers. (laughs) So you're going to want to be in there to grab one of those as quickly as you can. Right. For sure. And then on the stage pass, I like what they did this time, too, where you can go and get your first stage pass for any of the presentations that are from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. But then you can return after 1230 to get one for later in the afternoon. So there isn't somebody grabbing a whole bunch of different ones or, you know, trying to um, to fake out the system. It looks like and you're not just stuck into one presentation. You can actually get. Uh, stage passes for two different presentations, which I like. So the other thing, too, in terms of shopping is, you know, if that's sort of your thing and you don't get a stage pass, obviously you can just queue standby as well. But some of the best times to go shopping are while some of the big presentations are going on. So if you don't care about seeing, you know, the concerts or Disney Interactive or whatever it may be, and there's a huge group of people that are in there, obviously the lines for shopping will be a lot shorter. Yeah, and another lesson I learned last time was I'm not a leave a credit shop- card at home. Yeah, <laughs> but <laughs> I'm not a, I'm, yeah, but I'm not a huge guy. Like there were limited edition collectibles, and people are just that's 
all they cared about. Some people just make a beeline for that. But even if you're not a hardcore collectible person and you want to just have a nice memory or something, I still think you should really try to get to the stores earlier in the weekend because even if an item isn't limited edition, the it was amazing how people were just scooping things up. And we went in the last day into the uh, the Imagineering store to Mickey's of Glendale and shelves were bare. I mean, people are really excited about a lot of that stuff. And if you just, if, if you have or see something you like, don't wait, don't wait and say, Oh, I'll get it tomorrow. or I'll make time for it. If you have a little window of time and you think you can get in there, then I would say, try to get it when you first think about it. Yeah. Definitely good advice, especially for Mickey's of Glendale, because that's yeah. that really special store that only Imagineers and their friends and family can, can visit and get into. And people just covet everything that says Imagineering on it. So those are definitely some of the things that go first. Yeah, and the collectible stuff, and even the, the limited edition D23 Expo stuff, whether it's a vinyl mm-hmm. a shirt, a jacket, whatever it may be, um, it, it's... <laughs> It's you see people with a lot of big big bags uh, walking around as well, but but I think this actually leads to what was really next on my list, and I know maybe we're, we're sort of overstating the obvious, but get there early, like get there really early if you want to get some of those items, if you want to see uh, certain things, and while Disney quote unquote do not encourage guests to wait overnight for sessions, <laughs> what they are doing is they are actually allowing for overnight queuing inside the convention center at Hall E. So if you're planning on going to the expo Friday morning, you can start lining up on Thursday at 10 o'clock in Hall E. Same thing, you can start queuing up on on, uh, Friday for Saturday and Saturday for Sunday, et cetera. Um, If you you come there after 7 o'clock in the morning on Friday or Saturday, you need to go right onto the main entrance for the show floor. And I think for Sunday... You can't line up before 5 a.m. So I think you can't line up Saturday night. You could only line up uh, starting at 5 o'clock in the morning on Sunday. But I think it, it's smart of Disney. They understand from the past three expos that people will be getting there the day before to try and get whatever it is that they want to see first. So allowing them to queue up inside for safety. I think there's going to have uh, concession stands open for some limited food items as well. I think that's very smart on their part and I think it's a it's a nice convenience for those people that are already planning to do it. Yeah, yeah it I, really is. But there's a couple of caveats though that they've thrown into that whole overnight waiting in the line thing because you know to me you think well you can bring a small pup tent, you can get a pillow, bring in a cooler, but it's really important to note that they are saying that nothing can be brought in that can't go into a very small backpack or a small bag. So you can't you know, bring all your accessories to make hot dogs <laughs> outside your pump tent in Hall A uh, or Hall E, e that's just not going to work. So between you have to be mindful of what you're bringing and it has to go into a backpack or a small bag. And then they're also saying that they are not going to allow people to hold space in line for others to join you later. So you can't just send, you know, Jeremy Marks to go <laughs> sit in line for you while we all, you know, wait and, and, uh, and join him later. You have to have all of the people in the party there for the entire time. You know some creative kid is going to get there and be like the third person and offer to sell his spot on Twitter. (laughs) Oh, what a great idea. (laughs) I've seen it happen at the Apple Store. I'm going to see it happen at D23 Expo, I'm sure. Yeah, and even though you said like Disney isn't encouraging it, it was just amazing to me, like the reality of it when we – I woke up early at the last expo. We're in the Hilton overlooking and the sun wasn't even up. And when I looked out my window, it was there were thousands of people already out there. So I think that's a good thing as opposed to just people being left out in the elements. Although it's it's pretty, you know, the weather's generally nice. You never know. It's just nice. Yeah, it's like Florida. Yeah, it's like sitting outside in Florida. (laughs) (laughs) I think, though, with the lines and I know that they've they're never a pleasant thing when you have to sit there and wait. and There's other things going on around you, especially when there's a theme park that's right across the street and you're waiting in a line. But I got to say, if you go in with the appropriate level of expectation that you're probably going to be waiting in some lines and then make the most of it, I, I think that. Uh, some of the times that we've had to wait in lines for some of the presentations and to get in, we've actually met some of the 
best people that have turned out to be great friends later on. So talking to people around you, you all share a love for Disney and all things, you know, between movies and Star Wars and Marvel and Thor and everything else that's in between, (laughs) you know, you get to strike up some great conversations and, and meet some new friends. Oh, and on that note, I've actually noticed there are some very smart line people who hang out there. I've seen people who have brought like small inflatable pillows. You know, they have it in their bag and then they puff it up when they get in line and they've, you know, sort of lean back on the floor and they have their Kindles and they just sit and, and read too. So I would, that's something to think about. I'd also make sure you bring a battery or several of them for all of your electronic devices. Because um, if you're going to be sitting in a two hour line, you're going to be really disappointed if everything dies on you then too. Um, but I've been surprised at how well equipped people are for sitting in a two and a half or three hour line. If that's what they were, you know, really wanted to see. Well, and to your point, Chrissy, you know, one of the things that I was thinking too is to use your time in line well. And what I mean by that is, look, you are, if you are a Disney fan, I don't care if it's ABC, the movies, the theme parks, the merchandise, whatever, you are with your people, right? This yep. is a convention of Disney fans. Use that time in line to connect with others. And what I mean by connect is I don't mean on your phone, on the Twitter, and on the Facebook, and the Friendster, and whatever CompuServe, whatever you're still on. I mean, put your phone down and actually start up a conversation with the people next to you. You, Becky talked about sort of making and meeting new friends. That's what this is all about, right? D23 was meant to be, first and foremost, a community of Disney fans. The idea is to bring people together. Start chatting with some other people online. Look, you're going to be next to them for a long, long time. Uh, start, first of all, make sure you shower first that morning and then start chatting with the, the people around you and use social as well. I mean, obviously use, you know, Twitter and Facebook, you know, there's going to be hashtags and stuff that, uh, that you should be using and connecting that way, but try and actually make the, uh, the real relationships. When I say online, I mean, on the line that you're standing in, not on the device you're holding. Yeah. I actually had that down on my list because last time, the last expo, I was waiting in line and I actually put down on the list to just just like you said, to talk to people around you, because I was talking to a gentleman online and it turns out that he is in he works for Disney Animation Studios. He's an animator. And when I asked him, I was like, don't you have a pass? And he says, listen, I just want he just wanted to be a fan. He didn't want to come in and do anything. He just came in and he was online just like the rest of us to see an event. And it was pretty it was uh, to see a, uh, a presentation. It was pretty cool to sit there and. uh just, I mean, you never know who you're going to wind up bumping into with these things. Tony, I think you make a great point. And actually, one of the things I have on my list, Christy, this is just for you, because I know this was one of your favorite parts of Expo 2013. If you want to really have fun, and that's what this is all about, you should come in costume. You know, believe it or not, I have it on my list. I do have it on my, I'm waving my pink post at you. I have it on there. Now, and, you know, it doesn't have to be as extreme as the cosplay. It could be just like a Disney bounding kind of thing. Or lots of people make their own shirts, you know, with their own special messages. I saw people who had shirts where they asked, you know, friend, friends to sign it. Um, sort of like a walking autograph book, things like that. What you wear is part of the conversation while you're there, without a doubt. I think you should come in costume. I think you should come as your as your favorite Disney or Marvel or Star Wars or Muppet character, whoever it may be, as long as they are family. I think you should too, Lou. As long as they are. Look, I dressed up as Thor last time, so let's just relax. Um, <laughs> There are some guidelines you need to check out the D23 Expo site. Obviously, it's got to be family friendly. And yes, you can wear masks as long as you can see out of it. Um, Obviously, don't try and hold yourself out as being sort of an official part of the expo. But I look, for me, I actually loved seeing that. I loved seeing the creativity and the personalities of people just come out. I mean, some of the cosplayers seemed to be people who were having some of the most fun. They didn't even care about going to the presentations. They cared about meeting like-minded people and show. I mean, some of them were so elaborate and so talented in the creation. I loved having them come over to uh, the booth and share with us. Remember Iron Man and the princesses and the Marvel characters? And now I think, look, this is going to be the year of Star Wars, I think, at the expo. I don't think that's going to be any surprise to anybody. 
We'd love to see some cool Star Wars characters and kids and adults. I mean, people came as different characters every day. This year uh, on Friday, they're actually having a mouse parade uh, contest, and sort of there's a they're having a uh, a Disney and Marvel hero contest. Once upon a costume, sort of the magic of Disney fairy tales. Wonderful worlds of Disney contests for theme parks and movies and TVs. Weird, wild, and goofy, and the best of Star Wars. And the winner actually gets a trip for two to Aulani. So it's like oh. the real deal, man. So <laughs> you know there's going to be good stuff. And if you, the listener, are going to be there in costume or T-shirt or dressed as whatever, please come to our booth and we will be sure and feature you on our live broadcast. And give Christy Visaki a hug because she digs the cosplay, man. That was one of the most exciting parts of being there last year was all the people who were just walking by and you just go, oh, Iron Man, come here, because the, the costumes were so cool and so elaborate and so out of this world. And those the cosplayers are really used to it, walking by and walking through. And they're celebrities. They just, I mean, they become yeah. the celebrities. Yeah. Yeah. They would get stopped and have their picture taken with people all over the place. It, it's amazing. And the talent of some of these people and what they put into it, really, really mind blowing. Oh, yeah. well, how about Kermit the Frog last time? That was Oh, my gosh. <laughs> there was a guy walking around good. with the Kermit the Frog puppet, and he did the voice. It was incredible. I'm still friends, but there he goes. We were talking about who you make friends with. I'm still friends with that guy on Facebook, and he goes and does that all over the place. So hopefully we'll see him again, too. Yeah, I mean, and he, I mean, he was very, very good. I mean, a lot of these guys you almost could mistake as official, not that they were holding themselves out that way, but it's they're so good, and these these people that take – months and months and months to hand make their dresses and their costumes and foam latex and all the different things that they do. And there's lights and music and sound effects. I mean, it's, it's amazing how they put them together. Christy, what are you going to dress as this year? <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a second. Actually, I take that back, Christy, because didn't we say last time that if I dressed up as Thor, Becky was going to dress as like a princess or wear a dress yes. or something? Yes. Wait, Becky what, was going to be a princess. That's right. I remember okay. that too. Tony, you remember that, right? All right. Now, if you remember yes, correctly. Yes, I do. Time out. <laughs> if I remember correctly, we went back to that booth that had the Snow White dresses. Right. And they, they had sold out when we got mm, back. So convenient. I wasn't able to. That's because you sent one of your minions over there to buy their entire stock out of princess that's dresses. That's exactly <laughs> what I didn't do. But that's, that's why it. you'll do it this year because right. well, there have been people waiting two years to see this. Oh, my gosh. Right. And you can look – now that you've followed our tips about getting there early and picking yes. out your costume, it's going to be perfect. <laughs> Oh boy! Yeah, isn't isn't it like last year or last last year? See, I'm doing it too. Last time when I ba barely got out of the booth at all, so you know that might be a, a tough call. Well, so, you know what? I'm sure we can find a listener or listeners who oh would be boy. happy to help you make this. I happen. am just digging a bigger hole, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, we could bring the costumes that I have in waiting. Listen, I have no problem get, going in costume. Really? I've done it. Should before. I? Well, I guess we'll talk about this because I've got the I've got the Star Wars costumes here that, and no, not the furry one, not not your Ewok, but uh, I've got. Oh my god! I got be two, so hot in that costume. <laughs> I, have, I have two brand new Star Wars costumes for that some that a listener made for you and I. Well, just so you know, I I am not actually allowed contractually to wear the slave Leia gold bikini this year. So if that's what it is, we're gonna have to wait till next. <laughs> and that's time. exactly what I was hoping you'd say. <laughs> thankfully, so. <laughs> so I think but it's gonna be fun. I I dig uh, I dig the costume aspect again. You know, for for me and a lot of people, I think a lot of the guests become celebrities as well because those are the ones that people are stopping to take pictures with. And yeah, if you're coming in costume, we're going to be in Hall B, uh, the combined W Radio Mouse Fan Travel. Will please come by during a live broadcast, and would love to uh, check out what you what you've got in your costume and and hear your story as well. And so. and we're going to have double squishy carpet. So if your yes. feet are hurting, you got to come and hang out at the double squishy carpet. Right. And oh, massages by Tony, which is nice. So, I was going to ask about who you were going to volunteer from your your team as Tony being Caggiano. foot massage person. Okay, Tony awesome. So. Good to know. Oh, well, um, that actually wait. brought up something oh. that's on my list, though, <laughs> in terms of walking. Is, is that this is this is beyond theme park feet hurting situation? This was, yeah. I mean, 
that you really, really, really want to wear the most comfortable footwear you can. I, it's not the same as walking through one of the parks. I could not believe how badly my feet hurt at the end of each of those days. Um, so I would strongly encourage people, comfy sneakers, don't do high heels or flip-flops. You're just going to be unhappy. Because um, that, you know, that just makes a world of difference if, if you're in pain and standing on a line for two hours. You know, it's one of those things, and Christy, it's on my list too because, again, it sounds obvious. You're like, ah, oh, come on, I go to Disneyland. I know what walking is like. Yeah. It's very different. And that floor is concrete. That carpet mm-hmm. is basically like having, you know, parchment paper on the ground. Um, mm-hmm. It's a lot of standing. It's a lot of walking. And actually, I, I put that in under uh, uh, one of my notes. I just called bring backup. And what I meant by that was is bring backup, including, you know, you might want to bring a different pair of sneakers or a second pair of shoes and rotate through because you're right, man. Your feet are going to be like barking at the end, and you are going to want to possibly go to the theme parks afterwards. So you want to be <laughs> as, as comfortable as possible. But when I said bring backup, I didn't just mean bring backup in terms of shoes. Like, obviously, bring backup in terms of, you know, go on Amazon, get yourself a $10 external battery charger for your phone. Bring extra SD cards because you're going to take thousands of pictures. Um, you can't, one thing you need to know too, people ask this question a lot, is you cannot bring outside food into the convention center unless you have allergies or special needs or for kids or things like that. Um, and bring a backpack. Bring a backpack. Go get yourself a, a sling backpack or a really comfortable backpack um, because there are no lockers there. There is a, a bag check that you can do for like $2 per bag per day or something like that. But you, there's always a lot of swag and stuff and giveaways and things. You don't want to be carrying those you know, plastic bags that end up getting really, really uncomfortable in your hands. I would highly suggest bringing a backpack with you as well. Yeah, another tip on that, too, for those who are thinking, oh, my gosh, what am I going to do because I'm going to go shopping? What am I going to do with all those items that I procure in the morning? They are also going to have a United States Post Office servers um, shipping booth as well. So you can take your items to them and ship it back to you so you don't have to carry it around. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice because you are going to end up getting stuff. So A lot of a stuff. Lot. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, Christy or Tony, anything else like you have to remember to bring with you, whether it's bring to have in your hotel or bring to have with you at the expo? Well, I was thinking, too, and this is pretty consistent with the way I uh, see things. But, uh, you know, you're going to want to be making memories in a variety of ways. So you may want to consider the autographs and what you're going to want someone to autograph, whether it be a, a favorite Disney book or just an actual autograph book. Or we've always done the the uh, albino vinyl mation guy. And we have people sign him, but you know, you're, you don't even know, like Tony said, who you might even be online with. It may not be something you're waiting online for somebody, um, but uh, you're going to want some way to preserve memories other than just taking the pictures, I would think. True. Uh, something else I- I'm going to tell you to bring, believe it or not, and I know, you know, Becky might not necessarily agree with me on this one, but bring your kids. A lot of people wonder like, hey, are, you know, I've got young kids would my kids like the expo as well? And I think the expo is very, very kid-friendly. And, and kid-friendly in terms of the pavilions and the exhibitions, and I, I keep on calling it the Collectors Forum, the Emporium, has a lot of stuff for kids too. I mean, they've got presentations uh, with Disney Channel stars and Disney XD and Disney Junior, the Frozen Fandemonium, uh Gosh, what else? They also have the uh, the once like all the, the once upon a time stuff and the Muppets have a lot of stuff from TV. There's all the Disney interactive stuff, right, with uh, Battlefront and Kingdom Hearts three. So I think there's a lot of stuff for kids to do and to see, and and especially what I saw in 2013 were the number of kids from you know eight to eighteen standing online for autograph sessions for. A lot of different celebrities, whether they were from Dancing with the Stars or Fresh Off the Boat or the Goldbergs or Once Upon a Time, whatever it may be. Gravity Falls was one of the ones I really enjoyed uh, seeing last year. So I absolutely think you can bring your kids. But again, it's like going to Disney World. You know, know your kids and how well that they will endure a long day and maybe take breaks. Uh, Something else they have. I think they had it. Yeah, they did have it last time, too. It's called the uh, the Family Play Zone, which is on the second floor. And it's a place that sort of you can go 
with your families for a little bit of downtime and there's seating and there's, I think they're going to show like, you know, movies and TV shows and different entertainment, a lot of different uh, games they can play. So it's not meant for just adults to go. It's meant really just for families. And it's not a place for you to sort of just drop your kids off and leave them there and pick them up at the end of the day. You need to stay there with them. But it's nice that there's a place that you can go to get off the floor, let the kids do some things that maybe they would enjoy so they don't melt down by four o'clock. I want to know how you called me out or why you think you, I wouldn't think kids would go there because I think it's great for kids and families. As long as and they stay away from, as long as they stay away wow. from you. <laughs> really? Really? Wow. All right. No. I just, I, you, oh, ugh. all right. Anyway. <laughs> do you yeah, my guys. Last year, wait, do you remember last year no. where they had the big booth set up with a big stage and the Disney Channel stars were showing up and that, entire area was packed full of screaming girls watching the Disney Channel stars do a, a presentation and dancing and talking. And there's a lot of that type of thing for the the tweens and the kids. And the kid zone was really fun. They had a whole bunch of different interactive things for kids. So yes, bring your yeah. children. The gaming, and then the game, all the gaming, like you could play yeah. all the different games and stuff too. We were having fun with that. Now this year with yeah. Battlefront, I'm so excited for Battlefront coming out and that's a Star Wars yeah. game, Becky, just so you know. Yeah, when we went in 2011, I had my guys with me, and uh, now they'll be – they're seven and eight on this trip. So due to math, they were young, but they had the cl- – a Club Penguin had a huge – like a booth with um, bean bags, and they were teaching the kids how to play it. My guys still play that game to this day, but it's amazing how – we're going to do Disney. We're going to do the expo and then spend a week in Disneyland on this trip. And I think my guys are actually talking about and seem more excited for the expo than they are, you know, even for Disneyland. They're talking about all the stuff there and they had new toys that weren't out yet, which when you're seven, eight years old, that is epic kind of stuff. So yeah, my guys, we're really excited to bring our kids back this time. I didn't get to do it last time, but it's amazing how good it was, how much stuff there was for kids. Yeah, they're, they're toys for kids or collectibles for adults. Yeah. <laughs> and can I say That's something, dude? Do you know what I'm so psyched to go see? The Star Wars Battle Pod. Do you know what that is? No. Nice. Wait till you, you get tell. to the expo. Mine. Oh, nice. <laughs> blown. Now you're going to go Google it. Oh, so, yeah? Yeah, and obviously, you know, there's there's. I'm going to go of... hug my droid then. I got enough <laughs> I'm going to go hug my Zoom Zoom collection. What do you think about that? This is going to be a fun year on the Expo floor with you, too. <laughs> Why do I have a feeling I'm once again going to be shipping back more than I'm actually shipping there? Because you've done it for four years straight? <laughs> or for three? <laughs> I might just have to go and get one of those Once Upon a Time dolls just so I could meet Lana Perea. So. Ah. Wait a minute. You have to buy the doll to meet her. Is that what you're saying? If I want her sign what I'm saying is, if I have to, I will. (laughs) You've got a thing for her. This is a new, a new thing. I recently have been interested, and and I know people have been telling me. We have been telling you. I know. I'm all in on Once Upon a Time. I'm all in on Once Upon a Time. I am. You like looked at me. You rolled your eyes and you went, "Oh, I don't have time to watch TV." I still don't. You know how important I am. I'm so busy. I can't watch. And now he's all like, Lana. Mm. <laughs> I'm doing it for research for the show purposes only. So basically you're saying that if somebody could get Lana to the booth. I might squee. I might actually squee like a 13-year-old girl. <laughs> Lou will swoon. I will swoon. I will swoon. I will swoon. <laughs> oh, I've only seen you swoon a couple of times. I think squee would probably be squee, you know, more worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, so let me just quickly go and uh, look at my list. Oh, you know, you know, I think that's one. It's sort of just in, in passing, but we've been 2009, 11, 13. Don't for you know, it is the expo is so different every year. So one thing that's different this year that I love is it used to be uh, that the collectors forum, where we as sort of third party communities or vendors, or whatever it may be, were able to be part of the expo. But we're in Hall D, sort of away from everything else. This year, the Collectors Forum is gone, and now it's what is called part of the Emporium. And all the, you know, we're all sort of on the one big floor together. So this year, our booth is in Hall B. We've got a a big sort of corner, 20 by 20 booth, a lot of cool stuff going to be going on there. But there's all kinds of other things. So you'll see people like Her Universe is going to be there, but you'll also see other people that have 
art collections and merchandise collections, and there's a ton of stuff to do. And that, I think, is a thing, too, that even if you've been before, take a close look at the schedule because there's a lot of new stuff. Like one of the other things I think is, is really smart that they brought in this year is the Walt Disney Archives stage. They have a number of different presentations going on that really has, you know, I think the first expo was where they gave us that first little peek behind the archives curtain. Well, now they have sort of thrown the doors open, really giving us a nice look behind the doors to see presentations and panels and there's legends and historians and all kinds of collectibles that have come right out of the archives. They've got it in a, in a relatively small theater. I think it's only about 275 seats. So yes, it's going to fill up fast, but if you are there, it's a nice sort of intimate venue as opposed to the 7,000 seat arena. So pay close attention and go to the D20 the Expo site and look at a lot of the new stuff that's coming this year as well. You know, another thing that a lot of people aren't prepared for when they when they go to um, some of the presentations, especially the ones that are in Hall D23, if you've never been before, be prepared to lock up your camera or your phone because some of those presentations are not going to allow you to take it in and they do offer a check-in process. They're not going to allow you to take it into some of the presentations. So if you're new to all this and someone looks at you and says, hey, let me take your phone. I need to put it in this bag and lock it up for you over here. It's for real. <laughs> they're not Unless kidding. it's Tony. If Tony says that to you, then you should run. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Make sure that I'm they're collecting official. Wallets. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. You can't take your ID. Well, and the there. other thing I too, just... and I think you're right. And I actually fell under one of my notes, which says, you know, bring your expectations. Don't be disappointed. Also don't bring your selfie stick. There are yeah. selfie sticks and drones are not allowed inside the convention center. Oh, a drone would be cool, wouldn't uh, it? <laughs> listen, I know that you can't have a drone because I was going to bring a drone, so that was one of the surprises I hadn't told you about, but no drones. So no Fine. drones, no Fine. selfie Fine. sticks on drones or collectively or separately. So. Anything else you want to fess up that you haven't told me about yet? That, nah, you know? you'll have to wait and see, sister. This booth, <laughs> let me tell you, Becky Mankin, from Allen Nelson, it is going to be full of surprises. <laughs> Dun, dun, dun. Insert, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> insert, yeah. uh, insert. So, so, uh, Christy, what else is on your list, or did we steal them all already? Uh, well, my other one is in a sort of comical way, but it's in serious too, is that you know, you can sleep when the weekend is over. Um, it, it, there's, <laughs> and I meant that in sort of expect to be busy from morning until you know, late at night, people. Sometimes head to Disneyland, but others head to tra uh, Trader Sam's or are hanging out at local restaurants. Um, you know, don't don't expect to be well rested. I would say this is like a you know beginning to end of every day kind of experience, which makes it fantastic. But you know, by Sunday, everyone's a little tired. Um, but that, <laughs> a, that little, was, uh, a little. Be, be ready to buy some coffee multiple times and and sort of enjoy that that fact. There's it's such a um, an energy in there that if, just if you're just at the expo, I found that the like the sensory overload of of being with so many people who you who kind of get you and being surrounded by everything you love and running around and getting on lines that it was it was just very very tiring um, in a most wonderful way. But you're going to be tired. After after three days of that, it's a happy exhaustion. You'll sleep. Yeah, I think I remember sleep. sleeping for like twelve hours after. Yeah. Uh, Tony, what about you? <laughs> what what, else, what else is bath. on your list? Well, to go back to what you said, I think now it's we're going to be in the Emporium this year, and I really I tried to tell that people to don't just breeze through it. Really take your time in the Emporium and what was the old collector's form. It's amazing how many one-of-a-kind things I found walking around there. If you're a real Disney geek, whether you like, whether it's animation or the parks or anything like that, it was just remarkable the interesting things that other um, exhibitors brought to uh, to take a look at. But you really got to take your time and look through and walk around. And, and of course, come uh, visit the booth, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And like you said, don't assume, don't assume it's all the same because as you were explaining that the Emporium um, isn't just in one little area tucked back in the back corner. They've got us now spread between three of the halls. So if you've walked into what you think is the Emporium, keep going because there's two more halls and we're in Hall B. 
Yeah, and I think the other thing too, and I and I'm gonna save what I hope is gonna be my favorite thing for last. The other thing too is when I was talking about expectations, sometimes don't be surprised if as you're, as you're walking the show floor in any of the halls or wherever it might be, who you may run into. Because yeah. the Disney legends and celebrities and artists and imagineers and authors and actors, whatever it may be, chances are you will find them walking on the floor too when 99.999% of the time they are there as fans because they want to see it too they want to look around but they're also normally very happy to take a picture or sign something but also by the same token be respectful of them and their space and you know don't tackle Lana when you see her but you can respectfully go up and, and I'm just preparing pre- pre- myself um, but my <laughs> final thing on the list and I saved what what for me is going to be My favorite and and the best for last is I want you to be part of the show, right? I want you to be part of what we are doing there as well. And like I said, once again, uh, MEI and Mouse Fan Travel and WW Radio have sort of joined forces, God help us, for a single (laughs) booth. And what started off as sort of a goof in 2009 has really become the focus of what we do, which is live broadcasting the entire event all three days, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at d23expolive.com. And the cool part about it is that if you are there at the expo, you can come by and watch us live broadcasting and live recording. We're going to have a lot of different legends and celebrities and, yes, Christy cosplayers come by. But you can come by and be part of the show and share your story and tell us about your costume, whatever it may be. But if you can't get there... You really can be part of it because what we're going to do is we're going to have a a chat room going on as well. You can log in. You can ask us questions. You can chat with other, you know, Disney enthusiasts who are watching live. Again, that's going to be over at D23ExpoLive.com. You'll be able to watch there. You'll also be able to watch on your mobile device uh, on the Ustream app. And and if all goes as planned, I'm also going to be broadcasting simultaneously on Periscope. So if you follow me on Periscope, I'm going to be brought now. I'm not going to follow the chat there, but hopefully going to give you sort of a view of the booth to sort of see what is going on. You can chat amongst themselves. Unfortunately, the Periscope chat is just not as robust as I need it to be. So D23ExpoLive.com is going to be our home. Our booth is going to be B801. We're going to be sort of right in the middle and right on the main alleyway of Hall B, and that's going to sort of be our home base. And we'll get mobile and go see the different you know things as well and take the box with us. Um, but I really invite you to take a couple of minutes out of your day or out of the weekend and come by not just once but over a number of times because we're going to have uh, some very special guests and maybe a couple of contests and maybe a couple of surprises that I haven't even told Becky about as yet. Well, but wait, there's more. Of course, there's, there's always more. Now <laughs> I'm know. frightened. Well, I know. You you have a little bit of information about this, but you don't have a lot of it, which is great because you're going to learn about it on the floor yourself, which is yeah, I'm so excited. We are going to have a few contests, including one that you can play on the floor at D23, but you can also play if you're at home. And the prize this year is very significant. So when we start up the contest, that information is also going to be up on D23 uh, ExpoLive.com as well. So everybody who's watching in the box, everybody who's on the Expo floor, all has a chance to win. And... I had another idea last night that I'm not sure if I want to share with you. Maybe I'll tell Christy and Tony offline, but I'm not sure if I'm going to share with you yet. (laughs) But it's another great way for people to get involved and have fun and share and and, and be be part of the experience. Because that's the fun of the broadcasting live is not to sort of say, hey, look what you're missing. It's, hey, we want you to be part of it part with of it. us. We want you, we understand that you maybe can't fly out here and get a ticket. And, but So we want you, we want to really share the experience with you among friends and be part of the chat room. And we do a lot of fun uh, things as well. I'm going to try and remember to embed in the show notes over at www.radio.com. If you click on the podcast link in this week's episode, I will link to past videos from... I think we have videos from 9, 11, and 13. Um, I'll try and link to those there. 
We also and, have a lot of blo- uh, past blogs, Lou, that have been written from each of the expos as well. You just you beat me. You beat me to the punch. I actually had an. I'm even going to put a link to all the blogs that have been tagged D23 Expo because Christy and the amazing team of blog writers, uh, as actually was as I was looking preparing for this, I forgot just how many different blog posts were going on and live blogging that was going on uh, during the expo as well. And uh, again, lots of uh, little surprises to sort of um, to make it fun for you, no matter where you may be. So, and and there's that other thing. There's that other thing. Well, there's lots of Remember? other things. I know, but there's, there's that thing. That's the thing in the booth that people have to see. Well, to believe. Just, just, shut, shut up. I, but, oh, <laughs> I just I, I listen. Stop I'm, it. You talk okay. too. You, you said too much. <laughs> you've said too much already. So, uh, and the one thing I have to try and figure out. I don't know how we're going to be able to do this because I because we, we can talk about it now because he just made it public. But we know somebody who is a friend of ours who's been part of the booth for the past number of years. Normally, we've been sending him to get online or bring us hot dogs. But this year, uh, our buddy Jeremy Marks is actually going to be on the floor with the Disney History Institute doing a ridiculously amazing Oculus Rift sort of walkthrough of a Mary Blair exhibit and Small World and some really cool stuff. So I have to figure out how we can fit the Oculus Rift on the box somehow so we can uh, share it with you guys while we're there. But we'll have to go and uh, That's harass so exciting. Him. Yeah, I'm, he has. He's, so I spoke to him. I spoke to Jeremy for about an hour yesterday, and he sent me. I'm not going to talk about what the, vid, the what particular video, but he sent me some of the stuff he's doing, some new stuff that I never would have expected to see. From and Jeremy, you just don't. Yeah, you didn't from play, Jeremy. <laughs> you didn't get to see it from Jeremy. <laughs> no, that I no, that I never expect to see from it. Like it was. Don't say too much. I'm just telling people. <laughs> he's going to take you back in time virtually. It's yeah. pretty incredible stuff. Try to, to be there, support Jeremy. Um, it's going to be awesome. And I think you know what I think you make a really good point. Is every time we go, there are so many like wow moments when whether it's you walk through an exhibit or you see the 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 parks and resorts pavilion or they they announce something that we just had look to me and I may be way off base but I mean I think the handwriting's on the wall I think this year we are going to be talking about the announcements that are going to be made for a long long time because I think this is going to be the reveal of Hollywood Studios and Star Wars and Pixar and some of the other stuff that I think is coming to the Disney parks that we probably haven't heard about yet and getting a chance to see the presentations and go through these exhibits and talk to the amount. I mean, man, that's one of the things I love about it. So I'm going to ask each of you, if you're able to sort of maybe on the fly, whether it's something specific or in general, what do you think you're most excited to see at the 2015 D 23 expo? Christy first. Oh, I'm definitely all about the parks. I, I'm very anxious to hear what the announcements will be for Hollywood Studios, but also, you know, hoping that there's been some great surprise that hasn't gotten out or been rumored about that will um, just have me continuing to, as always, look forward to going to see Disney and experience it anew every time. I just, it's for me, it's all about the parks, and I, I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, ladies first, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm with Christy on that one. The parks is always the highlight for me. But this year, um, with the whole Star Wars Disney merger over the past few years, I I'm beside myself excited to see where that's headed, the Star Wars stuff. And including both on the screen and in the parks. Yeah, brother. Mrs. Mankin. No, oh, you know what? I'm right there. It's parks and resorts. Um that between the pavilion and the announcements and the presentation from Imagineering. All of the things that everyone has been speculating about, because we know everything on the internet is true. <laughs> I, want to, I want to hear what is really coming. And of course, it's not just domestic. We also have a lot of information that we're waiting to hear about Shanghai, which has me very excited and, and intrigued trip. as well. Research I know, <laughs> I know. So I, I think that that is the the focus for me. I want to see what's coming, what's new, what we can share with listeners and clients and things that are that we can get all excited about and start planning between now and what we're doing till 2020. <laughs> yeah. And so that's the question of the week this week is I want to know from you, listener, what are you most excited to see 
at D23 Expo 2015. And look, we really just sort of scratched the surface. If you go to D23Expo.com, click on D23 Expo News, you'll get a rundown on all the different releases of stuff that's coming, right? Because there's Legends Awards, the Fandemonium, the Archives, the Store, the Contest, Animation Studios, the upcoming films, Pixar, Disney on Broadway. There's a Silly Symphony concert. There's a lot of stuff that is happening that we just really haven't even touched on. Every aspect of the Disney company, whether it's ABC, Interactive, Pixar, Marvel, it's all going to be there. And I'm, like I said, I some of the things that excite me most are the things that we're going to be surprised by. And I think that's what I'm most excited to see. But if, but like you guys, it's also the announcements that we have been speculating and uh, ruminating on for months and months at a time. So I invite you, the listener, to come visit us on the D23 Expo floor or join in the experience with us at D23ExpoLive.com, August 14th through the 16th. We're also going to have a meetup the night before the Expo starts, a sort of WWE Radio on the road. Where else could it be but at the Cozy Cone Motel? I think it's, what, 7 o'clock until whenever. So come join us. Have a Cozy Cone. Meet uh, Tony and Christy and Becky and grab a cone of your own. And uh, I will see you all, God willing, in just a couple of weeks. My feet already hurt. <laughs> <laughs> and the complaining's already begun. <laughs> Tony, we you wrote my is required for all droid passengers. <laughs> Proof of ownership. We droids are made to suffer such indignities. Hey, you droids on Transport 22. It's time for our Walt Disney World Trivia Question of the Week, where I invite you to test your knowledge of Walt Disney World history or see how well you pay attention to the details, not just in what you see, but sometimes in what you hear. If you think you know the answer, you can enter to win a Disney prize package. But before we get to this week's question, let's go back, review last week's, and select our winner. So last week we were talking about the Harambe Market and Africa and the Kilimanjaro Safari whose storyline has changed over the years since it opened back in 1998. Because when it did, and until about 2007, it featured a cast member near the end of the safari, uh, sort of as a reserve warden who had captured the poachers, according to the storyline, and he saved a mother and baby elephant. And your question last week was to tell me, what was the name of the baby elephant? Again, thanks and congratulations to the hundreds of you, nearly a thousand of you last week, answered and got this one correct. Of course you know, you miss, you love Little Red and Big Red, the mother, and I randomly selected one of the correct entries, and that person is going to win all seven of my virtual audio walking tours of the Magic Kingdom, a copy of my 102 Ways to Save Money for an at Walt Disney World book, and a WW Radio Magic Band cover. And last week's winner is... Melanie Rollins. So, Melanie, congratulations. I'll send you an email. Get your prize package out to you right away. If you played last week and didn't win, that's okay, because here's your next chance to enter in this week's Walt Disney World Trivia Challenge. So, one of the things I am looking forward to, as I think a lot of people are, uh, at this and previous D23 Expos, is the Disney Legends Ceremony, where they induct a number of people who have contributed to the parks and resorts and the film and TV. And this year, there's everyone from Danny Elfman to Ivan Earl, Andreas Deja, Susan Lucci, some guy named George Lucas. So the question I have for you this week is, who was the very first Disney legend to be inducted? You have until Sunday, August 2nd at 11.59 p.m. to email your answer to contest at www.radio.com. Again, you're going to play for all the audio tours, the 102 Ways book, and a WDW Radio Magic Band cover. So good luck and have fun. That's going to do it for this week's show. Thank you so much for taking the time to tune in this and every week. I mean it sincerely. I know how valuable your time is. And the fact that you choose to share some of it with me each and every week means so, so very much. I also want to take a quick second and thank some of the members of the WW Radio Nation, including Todd Braun, Frank Hart, Corey Hall, Nicholas Menard, Frank Ashley and Frankie, Chris Alger, 
Sue Passauer, Paul Reddick. There's so many people I want to thank. And if you want to be part of the WW Radio Nation, visit wdwradio.com slash support. It's completely optional, but a great way for you to show your support of the show and get monthly rewards like scavenger hunts, access to our private Facebook group, custom personalized magic band covers, logo gear, t-shirts, care packages, live video group calls, and lots more. Again, to find out more, visit wdwradio.com slash support. Also, don't forget to join me every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern for WDW Radio Live. I do a short weekly newscast about this week's Walt Disney World news where you can be part of the show by asking and answering questions inside the chat room. Then I'll stay on, chat with you. You can ask me anything. You can also watch and chat live on Periscope. You can follow me there. I am at Lou Mangiello, not just for the live show, but for live broadcasts from Walt Disney World as well. Also, be sure and check out our blog, videos, newsletter, app, everything else can be found over on the site. I'd love to hear from you, so if you have a question you want answered on the show, email me, lou at www.radio.com, or call the voicemail. I'll be heard on the air, 407-900-9391, with a question, a comment, or even just a hello from the park. Let's keep the conversation going on Twitter and Pinterest and Instagram and Facebook, all those places. I'm at Lou Mangiello, and you can like the page at facebook.com slash WW Radio. Of course, you know, nothing beats a handshake and a hug, and that's why I do monthly meetups in Walt Disney World and events on the road. If you visit the events page at www.radio.com, you can find out more about our day at Typhoon Lagoon, as well as upcoming Meet of the Month, our cruise with the Star Wars Day at Sea and WW Radio 9th Anniversary, our New Orleans meet, our e-ticket adventure from New York to Puerto Rico, and then a couple days in Puerto Rico in 2016 as well. And this Sunday, I'll be having a meetup on the road as I'm doing a keynote over at Podcast Movement in Fort Worth, Texas. Again, if you visit the events page, you can find out more and RSVP. And if I can help you maybe build your brand or business or help turn your passion into your profession or come to speak at your business conference or even to your kid's school, visit LouMangelo.com. Also, quick thanks to Mouse Fan Travel. You know they are my official and recommended travel provider. Really looking forward to D23 Expo again with Becky as well as all of our different adventures on land, at sea, and wherever else they may take us. You can visit them over at MouseFanTravel.com. And if you want to get a little bit of Disney magic delivered right to your door, visit CelebrationsPress.com. And as always, my friends, and you are my friends, whether we have met yet or not, all I ask is that if you like the show, please help spread the word. Tell your friends. Tweet out that you're listening. Tweet me at Lou Mangiello. Go to Facebook.com. Share links to this episode or some of your favorite episodes, whatever it may be. And please go to iTunes. Rate and review the show there. That is so, so very helpful. I really do appreciate it. I want to thank Mark X BK 18 as well as Dave Flood, Outlaw Torn 6, and Will Douglas 77 for their recent reviews. If you can go to iTunes, search for WW Radio or visit www.radio.com slash iTunes with links and instructions on how to rate and review the show. And finally, and most importantly, I want to say once again how sincerely grateful I am. I appreciate you so very much for allowing me to share my passion for Disney with you in so many different ways. And I want you to do the same. I want you to do what you love every day. And remember, if you're, you're afraid of failing, you only fail if you stop trying. And every time you do try, you're that much closer to succeeding. So learn from your mistakes. Always keep moving forward. Have faith. And more importantly, have an amazing, amazing week this week. Hope to see you again soon. Thanks so very much for listening. So until next time, see ya. Hello, Lou Mangiello. It's Darlene Yankee from West Seneca, New York. I just wanted to call in and say that the WDW Radio Group is going to be going on their cruise in 200 days to Star Wars. Let the lightsabers go out, and you guys all have a fabulous time. And I have 168 days left to go to my first. 5K in Disney World in January. I am so stoked for that. Yay, be running with the team for the first time other than on the ship in Alaska. So this is going to be fantastic. 
So you guys all have a wonderful day. Hope you're enjoying your summer, and I will see you all real soon. Hugs, love, and safe.